Hello everyone, my name is Tyler Mestri. I'm from Minnesota and I'm a freshman. Um, today we'll be talking about learning Python through open source. So during my time for learning Python, I made a switch in the middle from using Raspberry Pi 4 to using a Mac Mini 2. And as you can tell, I also switched to a couple of more minor things like my mouse that I used from uh, Apple to Logitech. And then I have to say that using the Mac Mini is definitely better based on the price difference and overall feel. But you could get a $70 Raspberry Pi for just, that's just about the same thing. The only major difference is the Mac Mini 2 is slightly faster than the Raspberry Pi 4. The most important part in all of this is the editor. And for mine, I used VS Codium. I found VS Codium to have very little flaws and all around made learning Python very easy and enjoyable. I save a lot of code into VS Codium and it was pretty smooth. I ended up saving over 1,440 lines of code in via, alone in VS Codium. And I didn't stop there. I also ended up writing two games this game I'm almost done with. It's called Mr. Stickman.py. And it's like a game where you jump between platforms and try not to fall off. And then the other game I wrote is called Paddleball.py. And you try and keep the ball bouncing around your screen without letting it slip past your paddle. And this was the first game that I actually finished. And it was definitely easier than the other game, but it was still pretty fun to do. So obviously I learned Python and I used a book called Python for Kids to do it. And I wanted to do something challenging with this new knowledge that I learned. And my dad works at Cisco and is a very experienced coder. He usually does this thing called the Hackathon for Cisco. And the Hackathon is basically a competition to see who has the best hack in 24 hours of coding. And he asked if I wanted to do it with him. And I thought it'd be a great way to use the new knowledge that I gained so I said yes and for our hack we decided to build a chat bot out of Python code and it actually went very well for both of us and we presented it with a demo to the judges so here's the code for the actual chat bot uh, I pushed all the code into github for everyone to be able to use and create their own chat bots and I left the link there for the code, and this is a screenshot of my GitHub page on my our Mr. Robot chatbot. And as you can see, I have all the necessary requirements needed and stuff, so you can make a chatbot too. Uh, we used a couple of different technologies, you could say, for this hackathon project. So, for example, we used Python 3 while we were coding. And we used Tenor API for getting the GIF memes. The reason we use Tenor API instead of Giphy is because Giphy was recently bought by Facebook and Facebook is very, very untrustworthy when it comes to all your private information. So that's why we switched to Tenor API and as our app that actually runs the code so we can use it, um, we used Heroku and this was the first time me and my dad used Heroku. And I would say it worked pretty smoothly. Um, finally, we used the WebEx Teams bot Python library to help complete the bot. So when setting up your chat bot, you have to first of all save all your code and or change your code. Then you're going to want to modify your file. So you would do chatbot.py as an ex whatever your chatbot is .py. And then say you, and then save it with all the changes that you made. And after that, you're going to enter in git status in the terminal to make sure it went through. And after this, you should do git add and then your newly modified files. Then you're going to want to do commit s m with all of the changes you've made. And then you do git push origin master and finally git push Heroku master. Since we're using Heroku to officially run it, we use a git push rope master. So for this to work first off, you have to have everything running, like the code in ngrok, 
in the code that set up the chatbot itself. Once you have all of the that ready, you actually create slash add your chatbot. And in my example, his name is Mr. Robot from the show Mr. Robot that me and my dad both like. And when the, that task is completed, you can type in the um, at your chatbot slash help and to show the commands that it understands. And then next you can choose a command to do from the list. And I chose the office in my list of commands and, it, and then it posts a meme from the office as you can see right there. And that's all. Thanks for listening. Um, was there any documentation of the works? Yes. Um, I pushed all of it to GitHub. So you can go to my GitHub page and then you can actually create your own chatbot too. And then I documented like along the way in VS Codium, I like saved a lot of my code like from my learning like key points and stuff so then I can like go back to it. So then that's how, where I save some of it. Um, what was the hardest part about creating the chatbot? Um, so probably the hardest part about creating the chatbot was like, uh, well, we had a problem when we finished it where it would like post multiple memes of each. And so then we, we kind of figured out how to solve it, but it was kind of, it was, that was the probably most challenging part. Cause it took us like two days or something to figure out what that actual problem was after we completed it. And I think that's it. So any more questions? Um, has anyone tried to troll your chat bot? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> Any more questions? Um, thank you everyone for listening and hope you have a great day.